wow, that was a crazy shot we just saw from Jalen Suggs. But as you've been hearing the commentator say, this was an amazing game. This is game of the year, but a lot of it had to do with the defensive plays in Gonzaga. But we also see UCLA, an 11 seed, coming out and showing up. Uh, seeing quite a few nice plays, especially by uh, Johnny Juzang. Uh, Johnny Juzang. I don't know. That's a hard name to pronounce, tongue twister. But UCLA put up a great fight against Gonzaga, a team that I thought was untouchable in this bracket. I mean, Gonzaga's just been dominant all season. They've won like every single game by double digits. So for UCLA to take this to overtime and to lose it on an extremely improbable shot, that we have to give a ton of credit to UCLA for doing that. Created a bunch of good shots. Uh, that big guy, Riley, I think it was Cam Riley, dude hit a bunch of mid-range shots, and that was, that's not part of his game from what I can tell. And they just had a lot of big shot making. Really great job by Zhu uh, Zhang. But the Gonzaga team just really showed out. That sequence with the uh, Jalen Suggs block and two diming up Drew Timmy on the breaks. Just showing how brilliant of a player Jalen Suggs is. And we also saw... Um, yeah, that charge taken by Drew Timmy was just such a fantastic play. A dude with four fouls uh, with a game that's looking like it's going to overtime. I think it was tight at the time. He's willing to step in the way and draw the charge. That's just a fantastic basketball play. There's a lot of talk about, especially not just about the game, but for my NBA guys talking about what this means for the NBA scale. Like, which of these players are making it to the NBA? I know there's still another game for this Gonzaga team, but UCLA. I got Johnny Juzang. He really showed out during this run, and I think he cemented himself as at least a top 40 pick just off of like four or five games. And I mean, you have to give him a lot of credit for that. Like, how many games has UCLA played? We have to keep in mind they played, this is their third overtime game of the tournament. They've already taken out a one seed, they've already taken out a two seed, they almost took out another one seed, and they also had to play the 11s, you know, the play-in game, basically, for, you know, NBA people, we know uh, yeah, the NCAA has that, uh, there's 11 seeds that play each other to get into the tournaments, the first four, and UCLA was in the first four game, and they made it all the way to the final four, I mean, give them a ton of credit, uh, you can argue all you want, I mean, two, I mean, that's some more lackluster matchups, BYU, Abilene Christian, but, you know, taking out teams like Bama, a team that I had in the Final Four, Michigan, a team that a whole lot of people had in the Final Four, and then going to overtime, almost second overtime versus Gonzaga, that is extremely impressive. And uh, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, this is their sixth game in the tournament. And Johnny, uh, Johnny Juzang, I mean, dudes balled out in every single one. Uh, this is like really interesting looking at the uh, NBA draft. I'm thinking, where does Juzang really fit in? I believe he's a sophomore, so uh, we'll see where he fits in at the end of the day. But you know, Juzang, such an interesting player and such an interesting prospect to consider. But looking over at the Gonzaga side of th things, Joel Ayayi had an amazing first half, and he really showed off how good of a three point shooter he's become during the last month or so of uh, play. And that that's like, that that just, right, that just, you know, brings him up so much more in the NBA side of things. Because if you can hit the three, and you've, he's got all those other positive assets. Dude's also another player who's jumped into my top 40, maybe even top 30, like Juzang. And then there's Drew Timmy. I mean, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people in defense of Luka Garza trying to push him into the top 40. Look at Drew Timmy. He's fitting similar mold for this Gonzaga team. And I think I have to rank him higher than uh, than Luca Garza. Uh, we saw what he did on the defensive end. He did a solid job of sliding his feet. He did a really good job of avoiding fouls. And he hit some really tough shots, some clutch shots. And, you know, just we saw what could happen in the NBA. What could be mirrored in the NBA, which is teams get a smaller. Drew Timmy does a successful job against smaller players, and then goes on to the offensive end and does a good job in the post-up game. So that's really scary for, you know, NBA teams to deal with. And he's, I mean, he didn't really hit the three this that much this game, but yeah, that post-play, solid perimeter defense. We saw his passing on display. Corey Kispert, I mean, we didn't see a lot of Kispert today. 15 points. <laughs> 
that's not a lot of Kispert. I mean, he's had a lot of greater games than that, but it was mainly the Timmy show, the Joel Yai show, and the guy I haven't mentioned yet, the guy who hit the big shot, Jalen Suggs. I mean, he didn't have a crazy game. I would even <laughs> reckon he had a bad game. Them 16, uh, I think it's 16, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, and that's a bad game for him. Um, dude kills it in the break. I think that's the biggest thing. Dude's going to come into the NBA and be probably top 5 in fast break effectiveness, I would say. Like, efficiency. If he's on the court for the fast break, you know, there's a really good chance of scoring the ball, whether he's acting as a floor spacer, whether he's getting ahead of defenders, whether he's operating as the passer. He showed off all of those skills, and yeah, really impressive game by Suggs, especially with that block and hitting a clutch three. I wouldn't exactly call it clutch shooting, because it was a really tough shot. It's not a shot I would bet on. It's more like, you know, like a Damian Lillard hitting that three from the logo against the Thunder. That's what I would call a clutch shot, because it did feel like more of a miracle than a, t a really tough shot, if you ask me. But... Um, yeah, I mean, he got it up there. It was a solid shot. Uh, I'm not betting on him making that shot. But if he is bringing, if I'm totally wrong about this clutch shooting thing, then this dude's going to come into the NBA and be a clutch shooter like that. And he hasn't been able to show that off in Gonzaga because they've been, you know, looking for more efficient shots, you know, looking for Timmy inside or just trying to find the open man rather than trying to hit tough shots. If Suggs can hit top, tough shots, this, you know, it changes things. Guy who really didn't score that much. Um, this season, but that's because he had such a loaded team. So let's show off uh, the clip again. You guys probably have seen it already, but I'll play it again. Um, as we can see, Johnny's using, missing, getting his own board. And this shot is just miraculous. <laughs> that's just such a wild shot. Jalen Suggs. I mean, dude, if he is going to be a clutch shooter like that, like, then we are going back to that conversation between Cunningham and Suggs, right? <laughs> we got to go back to that conversation. But otherwise, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.